son of a b You know, something I've noticed is that Teppin doesn't teach fundamentals too well on its own. I've gathered a lot of information on how to be a better player just from watching other players uh, on streams, you know, on Twitch, on YouTube, on Mira TV. You can kind of pick up things here and there, but it's hard to learn all those things if you are not keeping up with people on Twitch and Mira TV. So I've decided to come up with a list of 10 helpful tips for players that are trying to get out of A rank and into champion. And honestly, I think these are helpful tips that'll help people even in champion. So um, today we're going to take a look at last second moves, blue MP, being patient with actions, baiting actions, and the threat of having a, a hero art ready. So, hope you enjoy. See you guys at the end. Last second moves are important to ensuring that you get even just a little value out of a unit. It's sometimes difficult to learn the timing, but it's well worth the effort. When you're up against a black hero or anyone with destroy cards readily available, it's sometimes the best you can do to block something before a unit is destroyed. When you last second block, your opponent doesn't have time to react to your unit's stats before damage trades, so sometimes you can surprise them by stopping a strong unit. In terms of the attacker's perspective, you can make a last second clear of a unit. Here, true power on Odogaran is timed so that when the enemy in front of the grown gate is removed, the opponent has the absolute minimum time to place a new blocker. The opponent isn't allowed to start dragging a unit during the hero art animation, so they have mere frames to guard, provided that they have the mana. Last second blocks can also be exploited. If you have a strong feeling an opponent is attempting to make a last second block, you may be able to stagger their timing. Here is an instance where entering a hero art animation at the last moment creates a situation where the opponent will have a very tiny window to drop a blocker. It can also be a form of BM, uh, beast mode, or bad manners. Whenever the game enters active response, both players are given two AMP, action MP that is temporary. Depending on whether or not you use this can give you more or less AP than your opponent. Because that unused AMP goes away at the end of the action phase, it's encouraged to use it whenever it's safe. This means whenever you start the active response, Try to have a second action lined up to utilize that free resource. Okay, so this is going to use a lot of numbers, so I will try to help out on screen. Jill opens with a chain of fists, and both players get two blue MP to use. I reply with animosity to give Dynamo revenge, consuming all of my blue MP. Jill sends another chain of fists, and the action phase ends. Even though Jill's MP reads 5 at the top, one of it is blue, so it goes away. The difference between our MP is now 2, despite me having played a 3 MP unit. This is the slightest form of mana and AP advantage seen to greater effect by the end of the game. This match ended at 2 minutes and 27 seconds, and I used my hero art 4 times, and they used theirs 3 times totaling 58 and 51 AP respectively. Even though we accumulated the same amount of natural MP over the whole match, I was 7 points ahead because I used blue MP effectively. 7 MP may not seem like a lot at the end of the game, but if we put it in perspective in a different way, if you were to wait for that 7 MP to come naturally, well, when an attack line goes from one end of the screen to the other, that takes 10 seconds and you can accumulate 
three MP almost exactly in that time. So each MP is worth 3.3 seconds. So seven MP almost takes 30 seconds to generate. Sometimes we don't need to play actions to force a trade. A loading screen tip in the game mentions that it's disadvantageous for you to place a 2-4 unit in front of a 2-5 unit. However, what this means is that if you want to win the trade, you have to play an action or another unit with a helpful effect. You're forced to commit more MP to save the unit or even just to make the trade even. Teppan isn't turn-based, but it can seem turn-based when you slow things down. Because the player with a 2-4 unit is forced to act, they give blue MP to the other player. In this example, taken from a match played in the recent GP, the opponent's Nevin is a nigh-unstoppable force, and my only salvation is to use Ivy Trap to seal and reset the unit. In order to get the reset, I need three units on the field. In a panic, I toss a unit to block the incoming 7 damage, but the blue mana that my opponent gives me is just enough to allow me to play Ivy Trap with a full board. Had they saved more MP for a counterplay, like a negate or a demonic intimidation, they might have been able to respond and turn the tables, but their impatience ultimately made my misplay work out perfectly in the end. Have you ever wanted to use a buff on a unit, but you were afraid of your opponent's answer? Baiting actions is an important part of meta play. Consider what is the most important action for you and try to anchor it last in the active response when your opponent's MP is depleted. The typical negate, unforeseen interference, is three MP. So if your opponent is down to one or two MP, your buff is more likely to succeed. In this example, Colleen's attack is coming in and the opponent is forced to make the first move to keep their unit. They play Demonic Intimidation, to which I respond with Awakened Power, to transform the unit and remove all targeted actions. Their weakness in response does nothing when the Gravios comes out. Ultimately, I spend zero MP and one blue MP. They spent three MP and one blue MP and got nothing out of it. However, if they had played the weakness first to force me to transform to avoid it, they could have played Demonic Intimidation second and made me take my unit back to the EX pocket and spend less mana in the process. Wesker's Dark Destruction, Akuma's Raging Demon, Ryu's Shinku Hadoken. If you've played against any of these hero arts, you probably know how threatening they are. All of your heavy units will seem like bad ideas when they have this hero art ready. While there is a cooldown on hero art usage, getting your opponent to use his removal art as soon as they hit 20 or 23 AP can give you more opportunity to attack before it's up again. Conversely, Patient Dark Destruction and Raging Demon players can simply hold their hero art, especially if they can deal with the threat without it. The same goes for Shinku Hadoken. If you can threaten the player into using a hero art on a cheaper unit, you can be free from its intimidating presence. In this example, I'm faced with a decision of which unit to replace Lair with, fully aware that a strong 4 MP unit or any 5 MP unit is a definite target for Dark Destruction. Even for a Yawn deck that can generate a lot of MP, losing 4 or 5 MP to a hero art is devastating. As the removal player, you may get some value out of clearing the way for a strong unit, but if you're playing against a hero with a buffing art, it may be worth waiting until they use their hero art to remove the unit to maximize your enemy's loss. So that was my first part to the 10 tips to getting from A rank to champion. And like I said, even champion 
moving up the ladder. Um, it's a little too big for one video. I want to keep them nice and small and digestible. So you're going to have to wait for part two for the other five. But uh, let me know if you like this kind of thing. Um, I've made tutorial videos before, but I'm still kind of new to it. So let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks.